Okay, everybody, today uh, we have Sila to talk about the new Empress build. So this is technically the new build, right, Sila? It is. It's a variant of the build that existed before. It wasn't that good co compared to other Empress builds before the Star Card patch. Okay. Uh, continuing from that, what's really cool here is this interview is in English, so I don't have to translate. Because translating takes double the time. Looking at Empress Arcana right away. So, the beginning question for me is, if you had to summarize your Empress Arcana right now, what would it be? Like, the, uh, the top of the top, like high level stuff. Like, no answer class? But in a good way. There is really not an answer or like playstyle to this class. Like you have to find your own. So like every run you go in is different because a lot of the damage comes from the cards and card draws are purely random, right? You really have to like practice the way of using cards and Trixie on and then you really have to spend in some time to get used to the class, which which I think is fun. Other classes, once you play um some time, you get used to it. And then like each run, I wouldn't say it's like identical, but there's a lot less thought processing when it comes to playing other classes compared to like classes like Arcana. So that's the difficulty part, right? That every run is different because it's based on your card draws and all that stuff. You also have to like look at mana, your skill cooldown. Since it's a balanced mana class, you have less <clears> time to look at the boss path patterns or like think ahead of like mechs and those kind of things like it requires more brain usage than other classes what do you think about the performance in it right now the, uh, these days for the higher tier rates i think it's really strong mm. um in korea people say puber soul right that's mm. breaker blade and soul eater the top mm -hmm. three classes mm -hmm. i think it's like right below that mm. and with good cards definitely has a potential to like match those damage okay so from the top uh, can we look at the stat distribution and the engravings first? Sure. Um, actually, for like builds, I can just use my slide instead. All right. So for build, but honestly, um, if you're trying to play Arcana before like Ancient Gear, so basically like below fifteen forty, and you're not making a plus like three by five plus one build, mm. just play Emperor. Mm. Empress is so weak in this stage. It's mainly because um Empress engraving level three is not that efficient. It's only ten mm. percent increase from level one to level three. Empress starts to get strong when you start building Empress one build. Empress one, I see. What would you do if you have a nine seven stone? Nine seven stone? Oh yeah, that's a good question. I think it's here. Yeah. Ah, or nine seven stone? Unless you have a adrenaline two nine seven stone, it's mm. better to just stick with Empress just stick with three by five plus one instead of going like Headmaster Crystal level two. Because it's gonna be either weaker uh -huh. or it's gonna be like less than one percent damage increase. That is because what you said early, the Empress engraving is ten percent increase, level three versus yeah, it's, it's only it's only ten percent increase. Okay. Theoretically, if you have a nine nine stone then go Empress Grace level 2. That's <laughs> very strong. 9-9 nine, nine stone, yeah. bro. <laughs> There's only like 10 people who With have 9-9 nine, nine nine stone. I don't even know how many people have 9-9 nine, nine stone in the West. <laughs> There's only 10 in India. <clears throat> wow. Arcana, but most of them like quit already. So yeah, just go for like a cheaper accessories and try to aim for higher spec because every 20 spec, your ruin damage increases by 1%. So quality yeah. over uh, the, the engraving line. Yeah, for Empress. And there's not, not much um, option to go other than Nightmare set. And then when it comes to stat distribution, spec crit is the way to go. So is a spec swift bracelet's okay as well? Yeah, but it's there? like El Cheapo kind of kind of build. Spec so, crit is always going to be better. Okay, the spec crit bracelet, right? I if see. you're trying to like raise your Arcana above like Elixir level, like 1600, Mm -hmm. and spec crit is gonna be better in the end and speaking of elixirs like... you, you put there as critical as the most important one yep critical is better than master and then critical damage is better than additional damage for pants for bracelet what other lines would they be like happy about do you need the crit line the the, the crit the precise it's not like you need it but mm. it helps it helps i see yeah it helps do you lack so, crit well the thing is it's really hard to calculate the crit damage and like crit rate for Arcana because it really depends on cards too. So um, when it comes to like math and uh, min maxing, like mm. mathematically, it's mm. really hard. There's lots of whole lot more variables to when it comes to, yeah. Okay, like min maxing that's... Arcana. 
if you look at like Elixir efficiency or like bracelet line efficiency, it gets scuffed on the websites for Arcana. So for new players who are willing to push the Arcana even further, uh, mm -hmm. their thought process would be number one would be high quality, uh, right. and then three five one. Yeah, the three five one, and and for critical Elixir, and pretty much try uh, the best points on like let's say for bracelet as high spec as possible because that's the that's what determines the damage for Luin skills, right? Nowadays, like the tripod work is much easier than it used to be in the past. So I do suggest um, if you're like trying to level up Arcana and make it strong, then making all tripods level five is probably going to give you the most damage increase mm. other than gems, maybe. So these are the skills that I'm using for this build. So the ones that I highlighted for numbers are the tripods that you want it to be at level five. The runes are kind of preference. The important ones, I think, are Legendary Wealth on Evoke, because this is the highest like identity gain. Mm -hmm. And then Legendary Gale Wind on Call of Destiny. Before, people used to use Bleed Rune on Call of Destiny because it's it has high uptime. But when people like were looking at the data, mm. people found out that Bleed Rune damage is not a huge part of Arcana's DPS. It's like 1%-ish. So people kind of move on to using different runes. And Legendary Gale Wind on Call of Destiny is very good. If you try it yourself, um, you're going to notice the difference. Because the crit damage buff, like your self buff, it lasts only 3 seconds. And you want to fit in as many rune skills as possible within that 3 second window. Correct. So like having a faster cast time on this skill makes it easier to fit in 2 or 3 rune skills within that 3 second window. So I definitely like this Legendary Gale Wind on Call of Destiny. But I think Legendary Quick Recharge and Epic Quick Recharge on Secret Guard and Four Card are the next important ones. Again, this is a preference in the end. So some people use Legendary Quick Recharge on Four of Kind instead. Mm. But the thing is, uh, when it comes to damage distribution, Celestial Rain has the highest um, per skill damage in, in, out of like four rune skills. Mm -hmm. And then followed by Secret Garden and then followed by Four of a Kind. So you do end up using these two skills more often. More often, I see. And as you like get more skill in the Empress builds, your Circuit Garden damage ends up being higher than Celestial Rain when it comes to like overall raid DPS because it has shorter cooldown. So you end up using more Secret Garden than Celestial Rain. The three main skills, Celestial Rain, Secret Garden, and Four of a Kind, these three skills don't have Paralysis immunity, not even Paralysis immunity. But the red skills are your main damage, right? The four skills on the left, you're not getting anywhere with damage. Like you, you're probably doing like same damage as supports. You have to be careful when you're casting your rune skills. Like it because if have you miss, paralysis. because if you miss, it'd be really bad. Yeah, it's mm. just straight zero damage. <laughs> it's, it's it's even worse than surge missing surge skill. If you would say what is the most important thing to keep in mind is probably not getting your rune skills canceled because if you get canceled you do ZDPS. Okay. Oh, and one thing I want to mention is if you notice, I gave level 12 on four of a kind but 10 on secret garden. But I did say secret garden is highest DPS skill when it comes to like overall rate damage. The reason is going from level 10 to level 12 doesn't mm. increase your rune skill damage. So these okay. red skills have their, their own skill damage mm. and ruin damage. Those two are different damages. Marvel Kind has a high skill damage. Right, that's why you put it to 12. Damage. Evoke is not a huge damage skill, but... It's more it's than Secret than, Garden 12? Yeah, it's better than other. And also, if you are if you, if you just like made Arcana and then you think your damage is weak, it might be because of the combat level. Arcana's ruin skill damage increases at combat level 55, and mm -hmm. then it increases again at combat level 60. If your combat level is not at 60, your ruin damage might be weak. And the important one, Empress kind of requires high level cooldown gems. When I play like Arcana on stream, people come and ask, can I play this build with level 7 gems? Yes and no. Like, of course, if you want to play it, you can, but it's not getting anywhere close to the damage that you should be getting with like level 9 or 10 cooldown gems. And it's mainly because um, this class needs to stay in balanced mana state in order to output a powerful damage. And with level 7 cooldown gems, it's harder to go to balance and stay in balance. Because even in balance, you need to like keep pressing skills in order to stay in balance, right? You need to keep consuming mana 
And if you have like an artist in your party, someone in your party, then it becomes worse. That's why when we play, you always go, can I not be an artist party? <laughs> yeah. yeah. For Emperor, it's okay if you have like level 7 gems because it's a max swiftness class. Mm -hmm. For Emperor, it's okay if you have a level 7 gems. Right, because it's a swiftness yeah. class. Yeah, it's a max swiftness class. But for yeah. Empress, you need like high you level, need high level gems. gems. So when you say 9 plus, right? 9's mm -hmm. okay? Nine, from 9 to 10 is like 3% cooldown increase, right? So it's not too big. Like, would you get the cooldown gem first before damage gems? I actually have a next slide. Oh, okay, a okay. Gems upgrade order. Assume you have a all level 7s. So you just made a Express Arcana. So it's like all at level 7, 8. The first gem you'll be upgrading is Call of Destiny level 9 cooldown gem. This skill is not only a stacking skill, but it gives you a very powerful crit damage buff. So without this buff, if you proc your ruin skills, it's not going to be high damage. The damage reference is pretty huge. The next two are Sassar Rain and then Secret Garden mm -hmm. damage gems because these two are your main damage. If you're like new to Arcana, then I suggest Celestial Rain damage gem first. And then if you're like already playing Empress and then you kind of know how the rotations work, then Secret Garden level 9 damage gem is also good. The reason I put Celestial Rain cooldown gem before Secret Garden cooldown gem is because Rain has a longer cooldown. Yeah, it's almost a double cooldown. It's more e efficient. And it's more, more important to get cooldown gems for your stacking skills before other, other gems because even if you have your red skills, you can't do damage without stacks. The way Arcana does damage is you have to get to four stacks by using your stacking skills yep. and then proc it with red skills. If you don't have your stacking skills back, uh, back up on the cooldown, you can't do any damage. And it's more important for this build because compared to other 440, like, which is the main Ar Empress build's build that is now in the West or it used to be in the Korea before the Star Card patch, it uses four stacking skills, but this build only uses three. So you're missing out on one stacking skills. So it's much more important to have high cooldown gems on stacking skills. If you upgraded these, how many? Uh, these seven gems, the rest are like, whatever. It's definitely good, but it doesn't contribute to damage increase as much as the seven on the left. So all nines is more important, right? Yeah, uh, all nines are more important. And then from upgrading from level 9 to 10, I would upgrade damage jump first. I see. Ma mainly because from 9 to level 10, the damage increase is 10% for each each skill, right? Yeah. But for Call of Destiny cooldown, it's only like 3% faster. So when you're going from 9 to nine to 10... You're always going to get damage jump first on the ruin skills. Yeah. I suggest you get um, level 10 damage jump on Celestial Rain and then Secret Garden first. And then one thing is... I put um, Serendipity. It's another red skill, right? This skill is actually the last priority. So even if you have like all level 9s or 10s, you mm -hmm. can keep this damage gem at level 7. It's only like 1 to 2% of your overall rate DPS. So it's really not that important. Okay. It'd be your last level 10 to upgrade. Yeah, because uh, some classes, like, they have multiple damage gems, but some of them can be at 7, which is fine. Uh, so one thing that the, ch the chat asked, there's just like a 440 build. You know what that is? So the difference between this is, uh, this evoke is stream, uh, stream of edge, the blue skill, right? That's yeah, the only evoke difference. Yeah, turns into stream of edge, and then you're going spec swift instead of spec mm -hmm. crit. Spec Could swift. we uh, talk a little bit, a little bit on like what the difference is? This build, you're kind of sacrificing the maximizing ruin skill usage because you're having one less stacking skill, right? The powerfulness of 440 builds, the two, the two builds, come from staying in balance for a long time because you have four stacking skills and four rune skills. So you get you do get less card draws, but you focus more on rotations. So your main priority is to use all skills on cooldown and then maximize your rune skill usages while maintaining your self buffs. What this build, the evoke build, prioritizes is you're sacrificing some of the rune skill usages but mm -hmm. you're getting a lot more card draws and then you're boosting your damage with cards it's gonna have a lower lower floor than mm -hmm. 440 builds because if you're getting shitty ass cards from the beginning to the end mm -hmm. then you're just like straight up doing less damage than 440 because your runes are rune, rune skills are not gonna be used as much but if you're having good cards, like you're getting Judgment Call, Judgment Call, and then like Clown, those mm. cards, then 
you're doing a lot more damage than the other two builds for first year builds. If I go over uh, by listening, the 440 is the one with Stream of Edge, but the one we're looking at right now, the Evoke is not a stack skill, so it'll be 4 th- four three one. Is this a four yeah, three one? Much. Okay, so yeah, so four, this four three one, if I understand, four three one draws cards more, but the four four zero draws cards less, but it depends more on the cycle, correct? Yeah. If you wanna focus more on the rotation itself or cycle, then you'd be going four four zero. But if you wanna like be utilizing cards too, then you'd be going this evoke build. The doc that someone linked. So the 440 uses Stream of Edge, but this is a variant as well. Do, 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 do you actually use different skills? So there are two options. I'll actually go back <laughs> to Lost Heart. Yeah, there are so many builds for Arcana. <laughs> this is a classic 440 build that was invented in KR before the West. Backflush or whatever. Yeah, right? in yeah. English, it's Dealer Slip. Ah. So okay. it's this skill, and it gives three stacks instantly. Uh-huh. It's the instant three stack, right? Oh. Yeah. But it you but it has a um forced backwards movement. Okay. And it's not push push immunity. So depending on boss patterns, you'd be like locked to use the skill sometimes. So like for example in like Thaimine, where they mine does like red patterns that's like not safe like here, then if you use backflush, then you die here. Oh. Or you're like forced to go like backwards. And what chat is mentioning, the other 440 build is the one that uses the Stream of Edge build. And it's a skill that you put it, like a, it's a placement skill, and it gives three stacks over time. It takes 4.5 seconds, and mm-hmm. it gives like one stack each 1.5 seconds. And it also has a crit, crit rate self buff. Oh, okay. If you notice, it gives you 26, 27.6 crit rate. It seems like it's going to give you this buff for like only 3 seconds, but it's actually not. It gives a... Because it, cause it ticks, right? Yeah, it ticks, and then it stays on for a longer time. Right. So it's at 5, and then it goes on for like 3 seconds there. From there, the correct. Skill. Yeah, mm. after the skill stop. I see. So it's a bit longer than that. It's like 6 seconds-ish. And then the third variant is the Q skill being Evoke, which is a four three one. Yeah, it's a totally different build from four four zero. So these the two builds that I just showed are the two four four zero builds. Mm-hmm. And then the West is more using this Stream of Edge build because there's a good Arcana Empress player. Um, he's his name is Pritz, and then he uploads a lot of this build videos, and then he also made that guide on this build, and then his like meter logs are pretty good too so people look up to him and then like people ask him about this build a lot so uh would you say because i what i usually uh, say things for like different builds is like it's preference wise so they're all preferences right yeah there's um ups and downs for each build 440 Uh. has a very good average dps it's really hard to define the floor for arcana class but assuming you're at a decent skill level 440 is a good average dps it doesn't fluctuate as much as the evoke build because it's less car dependent. Yeah, if you just know how to rotate your cycle, then it does higher damage than um, evoke evoke build. So is that so? That's why uh, a lot of people in the West play is the stream of edge one because the dealers thing it moves too much, I guess, and uh, and it confuses. It's a little bit harder to use. And I think this build is a little bit easier than the dealers for the four four zero. So if you're like a new new player, right? This would be the build that, uh, like, I would recommend because I would recommend easy ones. Uh, and then they can adjust, they can try different ones, and if they like the play style of those two variances, they can uh, change afterwards, right? I think this build is a little bit cheaper because it uses mass increase and then spec swift bris- bracelet instead. But the two builds are about the same damage. Assuming you have equal skill level or experience in both builds. So mm-hmm. it's really up to you whatever you choose. Okay. Those two. So today we're going over your evoke build. Uh, we can probably go over your your build now. Two things you need have to think about is this scratch dealer R skill moves forwards and actually has three casts. Third cast comes back. Before you had to use this third cast to get that attack speed and movement speed buff. But after the patch, you can just use first first cast and then you'll get that attack speed and mo- movement speed buff. 
Oh, from from just casting it once. Yeah, just casting it once. Oh, that's a good patch. And then this Call of Destiny gives you a how much is it? Seventy seven point five crit damage buff. Wow. For three seconds. That's so a that's if, a big difference. Mm -hmm. If you notice, uh, that was like sixty. Sixty six million. Or, yeah, sixty six million. But with the crit buff, it goes up to. 83. 83 wow, yeah. that's a, that is a big difference. It is a big difference. That's why you said and Call of Destiny cooldown gem is very important, right? Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. I see. Yeah. I mean, in, in balance, it's okay because it's eight eight seconds now, but its cooldown gems is like seven point something. And then, so in balance mana state, my cooldown goes down to like four seconds ish. Oh, so you can just keep spamming it. You only have one second, one second of like the buff and stuff, right? If you have like a lower lower cooldown gem, the downtime is gotta be longer, and it's gotta be even worse in magic addiction state because your cooldown is longer. Right? right. So that's why it's important that you have a high cooldown level, high level cooldown gem on the skill. Yeah, you have three stacking skills. E skill is called Spiral Edge, and then Scratch Healer, the skill, and then Call of Destiny. So how you do damage is while maintaining these two buffs. You get to four stacks, and it's gonna tell you the four stacks on your character itself, and yeah. then also on the boss. It also highlights the boss in pink. Yeah. And then just proc it with red skills, and then it does high damage. Right. When it comes to basic cycle, you just have to spam Scratch Dealer, Call of Destiny, and then red skill, Spiral Edge two times. And then red skill. Mm. And then wait. When these two skills back up on cooldown. Another red skill. Viral edge. Another red skill. It is the easiest rotation. You can just spam this. And use a Volk. Auto attack. When the skills back up on cooldown. Repeat that again. Auto attack. And then you're now in balanced mana state, so your cooldown comes up much faster. I see. So you're at balanced mana now. Mm -hmm. So this is where you pump. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and you have to stay in this balanced mana state for a lo uh, as long as you can. Pump. Yeah, as long as you can. Mm. Because you're gonna have lower cooldown. You'd be spamming evoke too, right? Yes. Um, evoke has a very high mana cost. Doesn't seem like that high, but. It's higher than um, red skills, mm -hmm. so you'd be fitting in evoke in between your skills to like burn your mana fast. And also, there's a there's a shitty ass part of Empress engraving. If the red skill hits, mm. it gives it, you back. It mana. gives you back <laughs> thirty percent mana. So if you're like <laughs> trying to burn mana more, then you'd be like you're using your Serendipity in the air, it burns more mana. Because Serendipity here, like, assume you don't have uh, stacks on the boss, right? Mm. It's only 2 million. Right, so it's kind of useless. Yeah. And I'm at 1653, <laughs> plus, plus 25 with uh, advanced zoning at max level, uh -huh. and level 10 Serendipity, it's still 2 million. <laughs> Okay. It's better so to just, just better to just yeah. just just use it on the air. Yeah, it's a, it's just better to use it on the air to burn more mana. I Unless see. Unless you have four stacks. With four stacks, oh wait, it's higher damage. But the thing about Serendipity is that it doesn't have self crit rate. Rain and Secret Garden has a self crit rate buff from the mm. tripods. For Rain, it has a forty five percent increase crit rate. And for Sacred Garden, it's 40%, and then Four of Kind is 44%. So these skills have a very high crit rate. Like, they're like close to 90, 80%-ish. That's why Arcana can go full spec and then 500 crit. Right, because they get, they get it from the skills. But when it comes to Awakening and then Serendipity, their crit rate is at like 40%. If you look at the second row tripod, it has a 504% crit damage increase. 500%. Yeah, that's a lot. 
there it crit and then it gave you 127 mil right yeah if it doesn't crit 10 million Yo, 13, 13, 13. it's <laughs> almost a ten, 10 times the difference right yeah that's a lot that's a big difference yeah. and this is a reason why we're not like prioritizing serendipity too much it's i see i see very luck -based. Too, yeah it's luck based and there's a lot of variance on it i see yeah but that's why we're prioritizing rain and then garden and it's also a very long cooldown it's like rain is nine seconds and then serendipity is 16 seconds so uh, going over the cycle again, so you showed that uh, you use the scratch dealer, and so you press R A, and then you use D for the red skill, and then you use E to use either F or S, which is the uh, uh, secret garden or four card, and in between yeah. you'll be using Q, uh, so that you get the identity for cards, correct? And when you go on boundless mana, you you're just like pressing it a lot faster because the cooldown is much shorter. Okay, so the cycle itself is, like, the cycling skills itself is not that difficult, correct? Uh, but the the class gets really difficult when you add in the cards as a variable. Yep. Do you think we could go over some of the, the basics, like cards and stuff? And then maybe uh, the stuff that uh that people would be interested in seeing is very like a various situations uh and then like what your thought process is uh per situation maybe like some of the most well-known situations perhaps like let's say you get these cards like what, what what do you think uh about doing uh certain things when you get those cards for arcana right you have to get the four stacks and proc the red skill right and there are different ways to get to four stacks <laughs> mm -hmm. the very basic one is scratch dealer that gives you two stacks. Call mm -hmm. Destiny gives you two stacks. Mm -hmm. Red skill. And then two stacks each on Spiral Edge. Mm -hmm. And then Red skill, right? Mm -hmm. These two are the very basic one. But if you look at this balance card, yeah, balance card gives you additional one stack on or per hit of skill. So if oh. I use balance card here, yeah, my first hit was used to be one stack, but it's now giving me two stacks, right? Yeah. That means if I do two casts, it gives it's gonna give me four stacks. You're already at four with one skill. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if I use it because I have four stacks, I'm missing out on the call of destiny crit damage buff. Right. So when you have a balance card, strong very strong rotation will be call of destiny, uh -huh. spiral edge, ruin skills, scratch dealer, uh -huh. ruin skill. And then Sprawl Edge, Call of Destiny, Rune Skill it is the strongest rotation for balance. It doesn't really work in Magic Edition State, but it works very great in Balance Mana State. Balance Mana State, I see. Yeah. So you get the card. Wait, I didn't use it. So it starts now Call of Destiny, Spiral Edge, and then Scratch Dealer. Like that. Wow. So, so what you've been saying in the beginning is you need to practice and trick in these situations. So yeah, like you're just like muscle memorying it, right? Yeah, pretty much. I see. I think that's very, very important as well. Because you shouldn't be thinking about like, because the time that you think about things and look at the uh, skill mm -hmm. uh, window, uh, you're kind of like too late. Yeah, most people, like most great players, they just like muscle memory the whole thing. Unlike other Empress builds, you get so much card draw from this build be so, um, purely because of Evoke and Legendary Wealth. Mm -hmm. Every every time you cast two Evokes, you're getting one card. Wow. So for this build, it's a DPS loss if you're holding on to the card. Other Empress builds, it's okay to hold on to a card for a little bit longer because your cycle and rotation is more important. More important, right. Mm -hmm. So you're fitting in card into your rotation. For this build, you're fitting your rotation into the card. Can we go over some more uh, variables on the cards? Well, so, I know I know that one is useless. Samjusa. It's not. Oh, wait, really? It's not it useless anymore? It's useless for um, em Emperor, but it's very good card for Empress. Even more for this build because you're lacking one stacking skill, right? You're lacking one stacking skill, so it helps you with stacks. What this card does is... What this card does is, when, when you, so this is Arcana's basic attack, right? Mm -hmm. When you have this card activated, it lasts for 15 seconds. It goes triple. Not, yeah, it goes triple, and then you can now stack with your auto attacks. 
it's very strong when you group that three-headed snake with balance card mm -hmm. because balance card gives you what three stacks for like skills right once yeah you can spam your rune skills with like skill auto attack ruin skill mm. Auto, auto attack, attack. Ah. yeah, kind of like that. So I you're see. you're gonna be able to maximize your rune skill usage a lot longer. Wow. Or okay. a lot more. So if you get three headed snake, and then if you have balance on top of it, you'll be mm -hmm. adding. You'll be the cycle changes again because you get three stacks, and then if auto, you get four stacks. Right. So you'd be rotating skills differently, right? Mm -hmm. DPS comes from how to like cancel your animations. Mm. There's an animation cancel. Mm. So instead of going like like that, you mm. can pre-cast your skills, and then it, it does the same with auto attacks. Instead of going like call destiny auto attack and then rain, you can pre-cast your auto attack and then um your red skills too. So. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. It's, so you, it's much faster. Yeah. You pre-cast it. I see. The thing is, in balanced mana, your attack speed and movement spe speed is faster. So the timing that you cancel your auto attack is different when you're in magic addiction state and balanced mana state. Oh my god. <laughs> and this is a mayhem card. It gives you attack speed buff, but it's really useless. It, hel it helps a little bit, but... Like you're already full capped at attack speed when you're in balance mana. So I see. So you'll be just burning it if you get yeah, it right. Yeah, just just burn it. And this is a corruption card. It uh -huh. gives you ten percent damage for thirty five seconds. Mm. It's a really good value skill because it's free ten percent damage. Um, mm. it's better if you if you already have the buff, right? Um, it's better if you can hold on to it and then a refresh little bit longer. It. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. But. On evoke build, you get since you get so many cards, sometimes you just like send it again. Right, because you get a lot of cards. I see. Yeah, but for other empress builds, it's better if you try to like hold on. Hold try on to hold it. and then keep the yeah. uptime. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But if you're like getting like a lot more cards coming in, and then you have to like use the card, then yeah, you, you kind of have to use it. But on this build, I most 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 of the time just like send it. And this is a joy card. It reads. It doesn't reset, but it reduces the remaining cooldown. How this card works is you have these eight skills, right? Mm -hmm. And if I press, if I cast a skill, wait, like cast a skill, there is going to be this cooldown, right? Mm -hmm. It reduces either 15 or 30% of this remaining cooldown at the time of card usage. How you're going to use this card is you want to try to use it after the long long skills, mm. but not on like Evoke, Serendipity, or 4 card because these are not priority in your rotation, right? Mm. Your priority is um, Rain, Secret Garden, and then the stacking skills. Correct. Mainly Spiral Edge because Spiral Edge is higher value because Call of Destiny and then Scratch Dealer, it mm -hmm. only gives two stacks each, right? Mm-hmm. But Sprawl Edge, it's two stack here, two stack here. Right. You can you can proc a ruin skill just with Sprawl Edge itself. So it's better if you use a joy card after Secret Garden, Rain, and then Sprawl Edge. Spiral Edge, right. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, that's a nice tip. And one thing about Spiral Edge and Evoke is that it's it's combo skill, right? You have to use it two times for the cooldown to, to be activated. start running. Yeah, yeah, cooldowns to start running. And the mana is also mana burn is also on the first usage. Oh, uh, if you notice, um, if you look at the mana, it burns mana, right? Mm-hmm. But on my second one, it doesn't burn mana. It doesn't. Uh, it's only the first one. I see. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different. Mana is mana burn is on the first usage. Cooldown start is on the second usage for both evoke and scratch dealer. I mean, I mean, spell edge. Mm. And because of this. Um, I'll explain it later in the advanced rotations. You end up using the first cast and se second cast separately because mana burn is on only on the first skill usage, right? Yeah. And in balanced mana, you're trying to burn as much mana as possible. As possible, yeah. So you end up using, before you ca cast your second skill, you end up using other skill first and then, and then use, use a second. I see. Yeah. To burn mana quickly. 
yeah, in the end, it, it's um, added cooldown. And if you're, it's just a matter of like a switching order between skills. Mm -hmm. But what it helps is it delays a balanced mana going to magic return state for like mm -hmm. a second or two. And all that stacks up wow. when it comes to like overall rate DPS. And there's a probability in this card as well. There's a 50% chance of reducing the remaining cooldown by 15% or, or 30%. 30%. And one okay. thing is, it doesn't reset or it doesn't reduce the cooldown of your space bars and then awakening. Wow. Only your normal skills. This card would be... Plus a fate. Like, if you uh, read the skill description, you'd be, like, confused at the be beginning, yeah. right? It says increase or not increase. Increase 40% or not increase at all? Up to 40%. It has a 25% chance of increasing 0%. Uh -huh. Another 25% chance increasing... 10% maybe? Um, yeah, 10%. Another 25 increasing 20%, and then another 25 increasing 40%. By the way, this 25% is not official, but um, people were testing it, and then it's very close to 25%. Yeah, we're assuming it's 25%, but okay. yeah, but it's nothing is official for this one. And you can actually notice if you if you get a 0% plus of faith, mm. you won't see anything. If you get a 10 or 20%, it's gonna say the the card name Twisted Fate. You get a buff, and then it like there's a text that appears above your character. And then if you get a if you draw a forty percent one, which is a really good value, right? Uh -huh. It's gonna appear the text in yellow. But can you use it? Nothing happened. So you didn't get anything. <laughs> the debuff oh. <laughs> literally says nothing happened. Yeah, yeah. The debuff said nothing happened. Yeah. <laughs> you got zero percent. Let's draw another one. Oh, here we go. So well, let's use it again. Oh, yellow one. Oh, well, that means I got a 40% one. Wow. If you have a 40% Toset Fey and then Call, which is a very, very good damage skill, and then you're using Awakening, mm -hmm. it's the highest damage you can get per skill. And this is a Ghost card. Uh, movement, movement speed. Movement speed buff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's useless. Just send it. And we have the Call. 100% so crit rate and 50% crit damage. Wow. For four seconds. It's really good to use it on your Awakening and Serendipity because they these two skills, they lack in crit rate, right? If mm -hmm. I just use it, never crits. Mm -hmm. That was like 50 mil, right? Yeah. If I use it with Call. Ooh. That was like... one. That was like 200 mil. A little over 200 mil. And yeah. then even Serendipity is... Oh shit. That was like 130 mil, so yeah. Wow. It's really good to um, combo with Serendipity or... Or Awakening. Awakening, yeah. Right. Since it's 4 seconds, you're tr you want to try to squeeze in a lot of rune skills as possible. Another tip is, when you have a call, if you notice, there's a delay in Celestial Rain hit getting hit. Like yeah. if you press it, it falls from a sky and yeah. it hits the boss, right? So there's a delay. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Secret Garden is instant. Cast. Instant, yep. So what you can do is press the call card after you use Rain Skill. So usually, what I what mm -hmm. I would do is Crash Dealer, cast two Evokes, mm -hmm. Awakening, call Space Bar, call Destiny, and then Rain. Since Call is 4 seconds, and Call of Destiny crit damage buff is 3 seconds. You do Scratch Dealer, Evoke, 2 times, Awakening, Space Bar Cancel, Call of Destiny with the Call card, mm -hmm. and then use the Rain, and then that's another Ruin skill. That can all be done within 4 within, seconds. Within 4 seconds? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'll be part of your Awakening burst. You have to learn the Space Bar Cancel timing. You cannot just Space Bar Cancel any time. Like, I'm pressing Space Bar right now. It doesn't space bar out immediately, right? Uh huh. You have to learn the timing yourself, and then. Oh, we went over card. balance. Yep. Yeah. And judgment card. Judgment card is top tier card yeah. in Empress Arcana. Yeah. So the, how does Arcana do damage? We have to get four stacks, right? Mm hmm. And then proc um, rune skill. But what judgment card does is it lets you skip that stacking part. Yeah. Right now, if I just press red skills. It does no damn. That's my DPS. 
<laughs> That's my DPS, okay? Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I if assume I have um judgment card, then What the hell? 300 mil? Sheesh. So it lets you skip the stacking part. So I can just spam red skills. Right now I have unlimited cooldown, like no mm -hmm. no cooldown on because I'm like demonstrating in real rates. You're gonna have low cooldowns on like rune skills, right? Mm -hmm. So you can spam your rune skills. I see. What I normally do is since judgment card only lasts for four seconds, you wanna um try to maximize rune skill usage within that window, right? Four second window. Four card and serendipity is highest value when you grip it with judgment card because serendipity <laughs> is actually two hits. If you notice, there's there's two hits to a certain deputy skill, mm -hmm. and each each hit can be applied with ruin skill. So if I just do normal certain deputy, right? Yeah. The second hit was one million damage. Yeah. That means the ruin ruin skill or the four stacks ran out, so it was like just basic skill damage. But if I use a judgment card. Both, both hits apply as a ruin skill damage. So it's double the damage. If you're using Serendipity without a judgment card, uh -huh. your four stacks are born on the first hit. So your second hit is just like basic skill damage. Serendipity is very good with call and judgment. Oh, and one thing to mention is in the recent patch, the awakening condition got removed. Before you had to have four stacks on awakening in order to do full damage. Oh. But now yeah. it's always full damage. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to use. So going back to the judgment card, what I normally do is even when you're spamming skills, you have to have this Call of Destiny crit, crit damage buff and then your attack speed and movement speed buff. And also this Grashular first throw tripod gives you 10% synergy to yourself and then your teammates. This is your synergy skill. So what I normally do is Grash Dealer of Destiny and I normally cast my rain without judgment card. Okay. And then while the buff is there, all the buff is there. I use judgment card and then spam other ruin skills like that. So it'll be like this. Wow. And if, if four notice, card resets, you just keep pressing it, right? Yeah. If you notice my four card reset there once. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, if your four card is always resetting, you can just spam um, four card on, on, on the judgment card remaining duration. Moon card. Moon card is a very good skill, very good value. So this one, you don't have to like use it after you use uh, castle skill like joy card or anything. For the next 30 seconds, you're gonna be guaranteed a reduced cooldown on of the 20%. skills you use. Wow. That doesn't only apply to these A skills. It applies to your awakening and the space bar as well. So I have a moon card, right? Uh -huh. So if you look at my space bar cooldown, it's A seconds. My awakening is five minutes, right? Uh huh. I have a moon card. Space for one, six one second seconds. Reduce, and then it's moon card is a very good DPS value. But at the yeah, same time, is. you don't want too much of it because it lasts for 30 seconds, right? So theoretically, if you're getting moon card every 30 seconds, then your DPS is going to be really good. And one thing to mention is your space bar and awakening cooldown also depends on the nightmare set too. Yeah. So if you're in balanced mana state uh -huh. and you have a moon card and you're using awakening uh -huh. here like this. And then I have a moon card. I use my awakening. It's like a little over two minutes. Wow. That's huge. That means you can use it pretty quickly, huh? And the star card. You <laughs> <laughs> really used to hate this card a lot. So the star card straight up went from an F tier card to S tier card. Before, if you got if you got a star card on Empress Arcana, uh -huh. you just alt F4. <laughs> like, your DPS dropped by half. Wow. Z DPS card. Because Empress Arcana needs to stay in balanced mana state, but before it gave you 50% of your max mana instantly, and it huh. also increased your mana recovery speed for like 12 seconds or 20 seconds ish. So it was pretty much impossible to stay in balanced mana state when you, get, you, get when you got card. a start card. I see. But now, with a, in the recent balance update, it changed. It freezes your mana. Oh, it freezes it. Yeah, it freezes your mana, and then you have no mana cost on your skills. Oh, so does that mean if you are in Boundless, if you use Star Card, you can stay in Boundless? Yep. Here. And I use Star Card. Oh, mana holy. For 12 second duration, it's a free Boundless mana. So this you always want to use it during Boundless mana. 
And if you accidentally press it in magic action state, uh -huh. then you're fucked. Like you cannot <laughs> go into balanced mana state for 12, for 12 seconds. seconds. <laughs> but it's actually longer because you're not going to be just auto attacking, right? So you have to cast your skills and then it starts, uh, your mana is unfrozen now. And then you have to go into balanced mana state there. Oh my god. So that's another thing that can uh, completely destroy your uptime, huh? Yeah, it's even worse than the pre pre star card change if you're using it in magic fiction state. That's why sometimes when I'm raiding with you, I'm like, fuck. Then that that's means when I you use it by accident. Yeah, that's when I use it in magic fiction state. Damn. So and that's I... the so this is this is the number one most despair moment of all Arcana players, huh? The Empress Arcana player. Pretty much. So, uh, a good a good question from Chad is: Do you, do you start immediately when you reach boundless? For Empress, it depends. I think for Empress, um, it's really good to use it after you use your like long cooldown skills. Oh, um, so like let's say let's say you have a danger of getting out of boundless mana because like you used all your cooldowns. You kind of use the star card to extend it, right? Yeah. I see. Okay. But there's a there's a thing you have to be careful about is for Empress Arcana, there are two ways you recover mana. Mana return from the Nightmare set, and then there's a mana return from the from Empress Christ Engraving. So you have to be care very careful when you're going from Magic or ma Balanced Mana to Magic Edition state, because sometimes if you're using Star Card at like 95% mana, you use Star Card then, but the mana return is after you burn your mana. And mm. that mana return doesn't get affected by the star card mana freezing. Even if you use your star card in balanced mana state, if the mana return is after that, it might actually end up being frozen at 100% mana and being in a magic addiction state, which is even worse, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, boundless now. Yeah. Oh, it didn't work. But um, but it's kind of hard to explain the timing. But usually when I'm like close to like this end, I don't use my star card just to be safe. I see, because you're so close. I just like hold on to my star card and then use it after I go back to balance mana state again. This is, uh to me, when you're explaining it, this is more experienced based, right? It is. Like you got to run, you got to run more raids. You got to run, uh, you got to run more, uh, you got to do some more fights to know like the exact timing when you could use star or when you hold, when you should hold star on that stuff. Yeah. I, I'm assuming if you're trying to learn Empress, then you're going to be spending time in Trixian, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have that one time where you use your star card and balance my state, but it actually turns into magic exchange right after. And also the thing is... Star card freezes your mana, right? But if your mana is above like 50% and then you use your awakening in balanced mana state, using your awakening goes back from balanced mana state to magic addiction state, right? So you might end up being frozen. <laughs> yeah, never use awakening when you have a star card. That's one thing to be careful about. I can I can show you. So here I'm gonna freeze my mana. Uh -huh. Right? So mana is frozen here. Uh -huh. But I if I use my awakening, oh shit the magic action state, but it's frozen still. Exception is when you're below 30% mana, so your mana is close to zero, right? If your mana is close to here, and then your mana is frozen, then it's okay to use it. Because after you use your awakening, it turns into magic edition state, but mm -hmm. um, the system is like, I'm in magic edition state, but I'm at below 30% mana, so I'm going back to magic edition state. So it switches back, and it switches back to, again, if you're above 50% HP, and then you have a star card, and then you're using Awakening, then you're gonna be stuck in balance mana, I mean, Magic Edition State. The star card is very good to use in between skills. For in example, between skills. Yeah, for example, there's a mech happening, or a pattern happening where you cannot attack. And you can use your star card there for 12 seconds, your mana is frozen, right? So you mm -hmm. don't have to cast your skills in the air to ba maintain balance mana state. So let's say you're the aggro for like a laser pattern or like a you're placing poop outside mm -hmm. and you have a star card mm -hmm. and you can use your balanced mana state there mm -hmm. to maintain your balanced mana state while doing like and while you're throwing the poop away patterns. right yeah and then place your poop come inside and you're still in balanced mana state so that's another good way to use ah yeah that's a good tip like when you're doing mechs it's a yeah just froze it for twelve seconds and that because because mechs don't usually last like that long so um this town card. <laughs> gives you the most recent card you use, but it doesn't tell you which card it is. So it's a memory game. 
um, when it comes to Arcana, most people have the same way to use like call judgment. There's a kind of textbook style to mm -hmm. use call judgment because mm -hmm. it's easy, right? Straightforward, mm -hmm. easy. Straightforward, yep. But the DPS dif the, uh, DPS difference comes from balance card, mm -hmm. and then this three headed snake, mm -hmm. and then joy card, and then clown card. Right. That that the way how how people utilize it, correct? There's a lot of ways to use joy card, and then it's very hard to explain mm. you kind of have to try it yourself in yeah and kind of learn the ways of using joy card sometimes it's better to use it like now sometimes it's better to just cycle all skills and use it and it then really you, yeah. depends on the situation it depends on, on the, the situation patterns. correct so you just need to fight more and then do some yeah, more you, cycles you have to practice. yeah it depends on your current mana situation it depends on the remaining cooldown situation and it depends it depends on the pattern Oh, sometimes it's even better than a judgment card to draw two joy cards with clown cards. Sometimes. Like if your cooldown is fucked and then you have to get into balance mana state. Or if you just got into balance mana state but all your skills are cooldown. So you have to be attacking, auto attacking for the next 8 seconds. Then you're gonna be going from balance mana st state straight to like 80% mana. Which mm. is bad, right? Mm -mm -mm. In, that in those cases, since you don't have a skill right now to cast, it's mm. better to like draw another joy card to reduce your remaining cooldown yeah all these like situations and different um they're very situations. situational yeah it comes from experience and practice so you yeah. need to spend some time um if you notice balance card lasts for 30 seconds yeah and your three-headed snake lasts for 16 seconds so sometimes i even draw another three-headed snake just to combo these two. Oh, to combo it together so if you, yeah. if you get like a clown card right and Corruption and Moon card is also not, not a bad card to draw again. Guaranteed good value skill. Judgment card is of course the best one to use because it's a very high damage boost for a short duration of time. But you don't always get a Judgment card, right? It really depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. And you have to think, well, if you whether want to draw like these two cards or like bring back these two cards. The most important part is actually memorizing the last card you use. <laughs> I don't even know what I ate today. <laughs> yeah. If you're if you're duplicating ghost card or mayhem card, yeah, that'd be smoke. You're, you're just wasting this card and the next card as well, and you're kind of throwing away the identity gain too. Next card is royal. Royal. It fills up the card slot. If you have a card here, right, uh -huh. then it's only gonna fill up one card. One of the card. Oh, so it doesn't yeah. reset. You you don't like redraw. It's like part of greed. If I had just have royal card, then uh -huh. it draws two cards like that. Oh wow! But assume I have royal card and another card. Only royal card turns into a random card. Right. Because you're because you spent one card and you're drawing two, but you already have one. Yeah, and this is another good card. So um, when I don't have call judgment, I usually end up duplicating royal card too with clown B because um, previously, like in the years. Be in the years in the past, there were a lot more bad cards, especially the star card. Yeah, but now they're and, all kind of useful. Yeah, even the Twist of Fate had a chance of decreasing your skill damage. <laughs> Wait, really? I, I, I didn't even remember, know. Yeah. No, I didn't um, even know. Like years ago, there was like, there's a chance of minus 10% decrease or plus 40% increase. So, but mm. that part is removed now. So there's a lot less bad cards now so i think royal is a really good card too and that's why i try to use royal card after using the another card mm -hmm. just to draw like two two, two cards more instead yeah of but um if you have like a judgment card and you wanna you kind of need to like hold on to it you can just like use it royal card with it so like it cycles your identity when you like, need to hold the other card so it's better to um draw two cards most of the times but you don't always have to draw two cards like, don't force to burn another card because you want to use real card. And the last card on this list is uh, Wheel of Fate. Oh, Wheel of Fate. Wheel of Fate yeah, of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. This card resets the cooldown of the next skill used. So if I use this card, I have this buff, right? Mm -hmm. And any skill I press next mm. gets the cooldown back. It even works with Space Bar mm. or Awakening. Oh shit! So you can actually oh. you can actually use spacebar by accident to get the buff. Yeah. So <laughs> you're like, wait, does it even work on getting up spacebar safe fall? Mm -hmm. It does. It does work. <laughs> so 
Yeah, so let's say I use a Wheel of Fortune and I was, go I was going to press my rain, but boss move. So I chase with space bar. It resets my space bar instead and I lose my rain. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah. So Very common mistake. Yeah, uh. you have to be careful with that. So this is a perfect one. So with these two combination, you can mm -hmm. actually fit in two awakenings. So awakening is a very high damage. For me, in real raids, it does like 600 mil, assuming I have these two cards uh -huh. per hit. So it's like... Holy shit, it's a billion from damage. From just awakening, it's like 1 billion, pretty much, in real raids. That's with Atrophin, by the way. So mm. when you have Atrophin, right? When mm -hmm. you have Atrophin and you have these two cards, you mm -hmm. can fit in two awakenings. What you can do is... Yeah, you need to have these to buff, right? Scratch Dealer and yep. Call of Destiny, right? You have to practice this, by the way. Like, it's very easy to get confused because you're pressing so many at once. You can mess up your Wheel of Fate a lot. Mm -hmm. And your call timing is also kind of hard. I'll, I'll go ahead and like do the slow motion. Uh -huh. so scratch Dealer. And use your, use your um, Wheel of Fate card first because... It resets the next skill use. Another common mistake our, our beginner arcanas make is they kind of mix up with joy card and they try to use this card after you cast your skill. It doesn't work like that. You have to you have to use this card before you use your skill that you want to reset. So apply the crit, crit damage buff and then um, use this card. Awakening, spacebar cancel, use it with call card and then use another awakening. Wow. So that fits in two awakenings and the celestial rain within a call card window and your three second self buff window. Ah, uh, it's just that the, the order of how you should use is different. I think uh, it'd be a good idea if I can see uh, like a minute parsing as if like you have the uh, boundless mana to, to show like what kind of cards that you kind of like rotate and we can end it with uh, a Veskel. One thing I want to show you is the opener. When when it's a longer raid, I usually awakening swap at the like starting point, press engraving, switch it to awakening, and then yeah, awakening, use my and... awakening, yeah, mm -hmm. to proc nightmare, and then you go um, in, right? Yeah, yeah, I go in, and I usually also swap to this awakening when I'm awakening swapping because mm -hmm. this is higher damage, but this awakening gives you free two cards. Also, I just started a raid like the mine G4 uh -huh. awakening swap, and then. Use that awakening, yeah. And I switched my, back my engravings and awakening again. And if you see. notice, it filled up my two cards. Yeah. If these oh. are the two cards that you see in, uh, when you like first start the fight, then these are not that good. But oh, let's okay, say okay. you got like call and one bad card, right? I would usually use like these two cards, and then I use another awakening pot to draw extra card. If that was a, like a card that you weren't satisfied with, then you can basically draw up to four free cards before the start. What is uh the cards that you would expect to see at the very beginning? Like, what is the better ones? Like, call there's call judgment for sure. Yeah, call judgment um, is the best one. But usually, if you draw a call judgment card before the fight start, that's a retry. <laughs> that's what um, you always say. Yeah. Even now, I never had a run where I started with these two cards and I finished that run. Some other ones are Royal because it's two free cards, right? And then Moon, probably not Balance because Balance is more useful in Balance Mana State. But when you're first starting the fight, you're starting from the Magic Addiction State. So it's like, it's kind of wasting your Balance card. There's no use when you're first starting the fight. But you can still use it because it lasts for 30 seconds. After you do the opener, you can still have like 12 to 15 seconds left on the... Those are the decent cards. Ooh, <laughs> I got these two cards. So another good way to use these two cards would be... So this is my normal Awakening Burst, assuming I have these two cards. I do the normal Awakening Burst with Call Card. And then use Judgment like that. That was like uh, 1 billion DPS there. Let's do a short parse. My opener usually goes with... I first use my two evokes, and then I use my awakening opener, mm -hmm. rain, and then spiral edge, secret garden, and I just spam four card to burn mana. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't have four stacks, I spam my four card, and then my serendipity, and then just continue my normal rotations, and then. Mm. It 
do that, you'll normally be in balanced mana state. Mm -hmm. So this time, four card reset a lot more times. So I'm in balanced mana state. So from there, you can start using your balanced mana rotations. And if you remember, there's also a quick recharge. So if your stacking skills are on cooldown, mm -hmm. you can just spam four card even in balanced mass state mm -hmm. to um hope for to the hopefully quick uh, get the quick recharge. Yep. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's start with um Trixion parses. Oh, and Trixion, mm. you want to have level three spread absorption, level two um, max MP increase, and then level one um attack speed reduction and then movement speed reduction this is to simulate for yearning and then mana recovery or support yeah. supports yeah okay let's see so, so that's where you're okay. mm -hmm. yeah so i just auto attack yeah no reset and then you have your card you draw cards a lot more often, huh? Mm -hmm. Almost like Emperor. So you every time you draw a card, you're kind of like thinking, huh? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, we got the Wheel of Fate. So far, you're thinking, okay. Got the Clown card, and then you got the cooldown card too so here you're staying at boundless but like afterwards you're kind of uh hoping for like a star card maybe yeah pretty much i see so of course call of judgments is like the best short term um best dps increase for mm -hmm. short term <clears throat> if you look at the overtime dps you want to have like each each of like little bit Wow, dude. Doesn't it get overwhelming if you keep drawing cards? It does sometimes. But, but you got, but 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 you said, so so chat. What Silas said was like he was practicing it, and then uh, when he's done like practicing it, got more used to it. He said he'll do an interview. So I'm assuming you got used to it now, right? Yeah. Because I'm I'm, I'm 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 assuming maintaining the cards at a faster draw pace is the the challenging part of this build. Yeah. Cause, cause like, you're you drawing be... cards hella fast right now, and imagine you get like clown card, you get like royal cards, like it gets even more confusing. Yeah. <clears throat> so I just had like three card draws within this balance mana um, period. So I'm actually staying in balance mana for a lot longer. Yeah, look at that. It's insane. So you're utilizing the cards like at the most optimal way and this is important uh what you're doing right now is very important for other players to do to get better at arcana right like what you're doing right now you just gotta Pretty do some much, parses yeah. practice the parses practice the combos uh this is actually a really bad parse um i made a lot of mistakes and i was just like kind of yapping so i when i normally just like parse with a decent cards mm -hmm. i get close to 50 mil mm. and the highest i did Last week was 52.7 mil for 12 minutes. Wow. Arcanas usually um, do tracing parses for like longer durations, at least five up to like 10, even an hour, because mm -hmm. just because of the card luck. Right, right. Like if you're just um, drawing like these two cards, your DPS might just stay at like 70 mil. Mm. Like it's very card, card dependent. So. Yeah. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll be um, posting another video of like a longer Trixie and Parses. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should, you should. Like, yeah. I, if you give me the link, I'll probably I'll put it in the description as well in the interview. Okay. Yeah, so so uh, we can do Vescal and then you can sure. fight, and then I'll just probably. Uh, what I usually do is um, when we did for like CL and stuff for like Night Night Chessel Eater, he just do the. Uh, the Vescal fight, for example, and then I just add a commentary on top of it, I guess. Okay. Ooh, not a bad card. 
Oh, one thing to mention is Judgment Card is much higher value in Balance Mana State because your cooldowns are a lot shorter. Mmm, I see. Oh. <laughs> oh no, Sila! I didn't stop it's my okay, Sila. This is a, yeah. Sila. It's okay. This is a. This is better for the interview content because you don't want it to be perfect every time. Know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's a realistic situation. Like resetting your four cards that much there is not a realistic situation, Sila. <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah, so this is when the Vescal is like kinda tamed. He's like static still the whole time. But right now I'm definitely I I definitely understood more how this class operates. Uh and uh the guys that plays Arcana, I can kinda see why people like playing Arcana too. It's very difficult, and that's a uh, that's what's the fun part for it. Like, you, in, and then every fight is different. Kind of feels like because it depends what cards you draw as well. Like even more compared to the past. Obviously, uh, Empress. If if it's too hard, most people tend to you play like Emperor, and then they just spam all the skills like piano it. But this one, it kind of feels like you get to take on the challenge more. Uh, a lot more things to look at. And spending a lot of time and friction about your parses and your combination of skills. <clears throat> I think that's the super fun part for it. <laughs> Wow. Silas parses are Silas uh, you know, the uptime all this stuff is super clean. So, uh again, when you guys are watching this again, uh maybe go back and forth and just see like how he rotates the skill. There's like a specific rule set he did talk about it in the very beginning. Like his openings, uh let's see if he gets cards. Uh he does that to, uh, based on what cards he get, he his op his uh, rotating skills uh, changes a little bit you know how he sp spams his uh skills on the air so that he can stay in boundless mana state and then do attacks accordingly and this one is this run is much much more cleaner right yeah and good cards too i had two adjustment cards and one call i think wow and you keep track of that um it's a short fight so i do get damn like, uh, man then, dude i can't like, dude, i'm telling you man i don't remember what i just said <laughs> I have a memory of a goldfish. Holy! 45% cruel fighter! Sheesh! Yeah, that was like, um, higher higher level and then good cards. Sheesh! Yeah, I see this a lot. I see you getting under it. Under level, I mean, under 3 minute best call is pretty good, so... Wow! You got anything else to say, Sila, the, as a wrap-up? If you want to see more, like, Arcana POVs, or if you have, like, Arcana questions, you can just ask me, come to my screen, or um, even I have a YouTube channel, so you can look at those. I also play um, other builds too. I also have a second Arcana that plays Emperor, so you can, if you have Emperor questions, if you have 440 questions, you can all come to me. I have knowledge in all builds. All right. That was Sila, boys. Thank you so much for the interview, man. I'll message you later. So I have a, I have a static to attend, so yeah. I should have started a little bit earlier. I didn't even know I didn't know it was gonna be this long, but I should have known because Arcana has a lot of information. So <laughs> we'll see you next time on yep, different raids, man. See you on Wednesday. Yep. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye, guys.